Hello, and welcome to the 21st Century Math Teacher. My name is Donald Eric Taylor. I'm a math teacher at Patton High School in Burke County, North Carolina. I received my Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics from West Virginia University Institute of Technology. I've been teaching mathematics for 11 years, and I'm a National Board Certified Teacher in Adolescent and Young Adult Mathematics. For my master's project, I decided to create a professional development course aimed specifically at middle and high school math teachers. As a high school math teacher myself, I felt frustration at being involved in workshops that were too general and didn't apply specifically to my math classroom, and I felt that it would be really helpful to other teachers in the same position for us to look at that same content from the specific areas of mathematics and how we could apply those concepts into our own classrooms. I decided to begin my project by conducting a needs analysis. I conducted the analysis in two different locations. One was at the Burke County Public School Summer Technology Conference, where I conducted a presentation about ISTE standards and then followed that up with a survey to ask the teachers which of those standards they felt that they needed the most help in. I gave a similar presentation at the Mathematics Education Leadership Training Program at Appalachian State University a few weeks later. I didn't follow that one up with the same formal survey, but I did informally discuss with those teachers what areas they needed help in. Once I completed the needs analysis, I looked at the National Educational Technology Standards for Teachers, along with the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics, and the North Carolina Educator Evaluation Standards to develop my 32 specific objectives that I felt like would help the teachers incorporate 21st century teaching and learning skills into the middle and high school classrooms. At NCTIES, the North Carolina Technology and Education Seminar, I learned to incorporate game-based learning into professional development. And I decided that this was the best method to use for my project. And I felt like this would work well because of the number of objectives that my teachers would have to complete. Two of the main aspects of game-based learning are the pacing and the flexibility. I created a self-paced course that allowed the teachers six weeks to complete all 32 objectives. The objectives themselves were scaffolded, meaning that the easier objectives occurred earlier, giving the teachers more time to be able to complete the more difficult or more complicated objectives later on. Also, with the flexibility, teachers weren't tied into a classroom or weren't tied to coming to a weekly conference that required them to use up a lot of their own time. They could complete things when they wanted, as they needed to, as long as they were able to complete the project within six weeks. The 32 objectives for this course were subdivided into four levels, corresponding to the four levels on the Educator Evaluation Rubric currently employed by North Carolina. The objectives at Level 1 don't require much emphasis on technology, so that teachers who are not very technology-oriented are able to still complete those objectives without feeling the need for much help. Uh, level 1 objectives incorporate things such as creating a lesson that utilizes a graphic organizer, or inviting a colleague to observe a class and provide feedback. These are things that any teacher can complete without having to have much technical assistance, which I felt was a good way to help those teachers get involved in the project without feeling overwhelmed immediately. The objectives at Level 2 begin to ease the transition for teachers into incorporating more technology into their classrooms. And specifically, the focus on Level 2 was utilizing technology to help improve the lines of communication. So for example, teachers are asked at Level 2 to create a classroom website or to create a Twitter hashtag that students can follow with information about the course. This helps the teachers be able to communicate better with parents, with community, and with the students as well. Teachers who complete objectives at level 3 begin to put the control of the learning into the hands of the students. So for example, teachers are asked to create an assignment that requires students to complete an investigation for their learning. Along the same lines, teachers also are asked to utilize more technology, making the assignment more interactive for the students as opposed to the traditional lecture method. One specific example requires teachers to utilize the flipped learning method at least for one week in their classrooms to see how that works. The objectives at level four are definitely more complicated and more difficult for teachers to complete, requiring teachers to become more reflective about their teaching. For example, one of the objectives asks teachers to write a reflection that they could submit for professional publication in something like the NCTM publications. 
uh, the teachers who complete this level definitely can prove that they are 21st century teachers. Not all teachers are expected to be able to complete all four levels. A teacher may complete as many as one to four levels by the end of the six weeks. This gives the teachers a better gauge about how prepared they are for teaching in the 21st century. I've created many different deliverables for this project. The first of which was a Prezi that I used at the Summer Technology Conference at Burke County Schools. I used the Prezi to introduce the concept of my professional development course to the other middle and high school math teachers. I also used this presentation to provide some information about ways that teachers could incorporate ISTE standards into their own classrooms. A second set of deliverables that I created for this project were all the Google documents that I used throughout the course of the actual professional development. I used all the Google documents so that I could have access to any of those documents at any time. Also, I was able to provide access to those documents to any of the teachers participating in the professional development. The most important and most time-consuming part of my project was developing a website. I purchased the domain name 21stCenturyMathTeacher.com and developed an entire website devoted specifically to my project. I was able to include all of the information that I would, had used throughout the project along with all of the instructions for teachers who may participate in this project, whether it was during the fall that I was creating the project or at any time in the future. As the final piece of my project, I developed an online presence, 21 Cent Math. I used this web presence to create a Facebook page, a Twitter account, an online blog, and email addresses where other teachers could contact me for more information about incorporating 21st century technology into their math classrooms. After all the work that I did for my project, the formal evaluation is the piece that I find most disheartening. I was not able to collect enough data to determine a formal evaluation. Fifteen teachers initially expressed an interest in participating However, in the fall semester when I began the project, only four teachers signed up to participate. Of those four teachers, only one teacher completed more than one of the 32 objectives. However, after informal conversations with several other math teachers, I learned that the problem was not my project. The problem was all the other work that the teachers had to complete during the semester. Many of the teachers expressed that there was too much new information for them to try to add on a professional development course that was going to last them six weeks. They felt like they didn't have enough time to invest in that professional development. Also, many of the teachers did not seem to understand that the course was not just a learning experience, but also an experience of things that they could use in their classrooms the very next day. Finally, many of the teachers also expressed the fact that had they had the opportunity to complete this project at a different time, for example in the summer, then they would have been more than happy to participate. Initially, I intended for my project to have a local impact. I thought that the other math teachers in my school district would be willing to participate. However, I did not accomplish that goal of affecting the teachers or the students in my local school district. I've come to the conclusion that I had the wrong audience at the wrong time. As disappointed as I was in not having the local impact that I had originally intended, I was equally excited by the unintentional results that came as a part of my project. For example, at Appalachian State University, Dr. Michael Bosse, who runs the MELT program, has expressed an interest in participating with me in developing a course similar to this to use as part of the MELT program next summer. Also, Newton, a company that runs out of New York City, contacted me because of my online presence to ask me to participate in some beta testing for some online learning opportunities. Finally, throughout my project, I've been contacted by teachers internationally who are excited about the idea of incorporating 21st century learning into their classrooms. I appreciate the opportunities that this project has provided me. If you would like further information about my project, please scan the QR code on your screen right now to go to my website, 21stCenturyMathTeacher.com. Thank you, and have a good day.